So at the core of Re3D, we are a social enterprise. We endeavor to make 3D printing more accessible. What we've found over the last few years is the feedstock is not accessible to people. So to truly get this beyond just the areas where people have access to extruded feedstock, we sought to enable the printer to print from pellets, shredded materials, even recyclables. We just want people to be able to use whatever they have on hand to get the job done. For a long time, 3D printing has been slowed down because the material is expensive, there's very few materials available, and it's a slow process. At some point we felt we don't have to accept that, we can break these barriers. And I think Gigabot X is a good representation of how we can go beyond where we are today. We really see it as the future of manufacturing, especially in the large format, industrial 3D printing. The filament doesn't make sense anymore. We have to turn to a new way of doing things. Gigabot X is proving itself to address those largest barriers to 3D printing. Gigabot X in and of itself has been an evolution. We had this vision originally to make a toilet size 3D printer that was under $10,000 that could also print from trash. Turns out those are two separate challenges and printing from plastic waste is really, really hard. The standard Gigabot accepts the standard filament in thermoplastic form and Gigabot X takes the pellets. So they really are different platforms and quite possibly for different uses, but the fact that Gigabot X shares a lot of its technology in the platform with our standard Gigabot makes it an easy addition to the family of Gigabots. There's a number of components that are different on Gigabot X from the standard Gigabot. And the first big part of that is we replaced all of the V-Groove wheels with linear rails. What that affords us is very, very precise motion and very, very smooth motion. And motion that doesn't have to be maintained that often, you don't have to clean it as much. It's just a nicer quality product overall. The hopper on Gigabot X is one of the things that's changed the most recently. We've built an extra frame on top of Gigabot X, which holds a dedicated hopper above the machine, which has enough capacity for 24 hours straight of printing with pellets. We've also changed some of our motors. Gigabot X uses NEMA 23 stepper motors, so we're able to move around our bigger tool head with more reliability and ease. The extruder itself uses a NEMA 23 motor as well. It's got a planetary gearbox on it to further increase the amount of torque that we have coming out of that motor. So basically it just makes it really, really strong so that it's able to churn all that plastic through the barrel as it melts it down. In large part, 3D printing is so much about thermal management. There's three different heating zones on the Gigabot X and that allows us to tailor that temperature for different materials. The heaters are much larger because we're pushing a lot more material than, say, a traditional filament machine. There's a whole host of key benefits from the Gigabot X platform, being able to print directly from pelletized or recycled plastic. One of those benefits is, of course, the lower cost of the feedstock material. We also have a benefit of being able to print much faster, pushing a lot more material. And finally, the material library is much, much wider. Only some thermoplastics are made into a filament, but hundreds to thousands of different materials can be printed in pellet form. On the recycled side, being able to print recycled PET, recycled ABS, recycled PLA. Even today, we were grinding up some rafts and support material that we had from our traditional printers, grinding that up into flakes so we can pour it into Gigabot X. We're very excited about the collaboration that we have with Michigan Tech University and Dr. Pierce and his lab. They've done a tremendous amount of work with characterizing Gigabot X using different materials under different circumstances. So in a very rigorous manner, we've been able to gather a lot of data on the Gigabot X platform. That helped us establish a paper that has been published in Journal of Materials. Working with Michigan Tech has been invaluable. They not only validated Gigabot X to print with pellets, his students decided to go a step further. They knew that our vision was to 3D print from flake and from regrind, so they took virgin as well as reclaimed materials and started grinding them up and running them through their printer. So we were also able to show that we could print from ground up and reclaimed PET, polypropylene, ABS, and PLA. In the coming weeks and months, one of our biggest jobs is to characterize the Gigabot X system to accept a wide variety of materials. In Simplify 3D, we want to make it simple for the user. We want to have a drop-down box where you can just choose one of many different materials, and as many materials as we can put into that matrix is the work that we're focusing on right now. 
3D printing is hard and printing from recycled materials is even harder. So what does it look like to be able to take that water bottle or that waste plastic and put it into Gigabot X? There's a few steps, obviously. We do know that you need a dryer, grinder, and a feeding system that's a little bit more robust than what we have currently. It's going to have to be an integrated solution. Gigabot X is really the centerpiece of this ecosystem, this family of products that are going to allow people to have the capability to print directly from recycled material. Good quality input material will make sure that we have a good quality print. Part of our experience with NSF SBI or Phase 1, they wanted us to validate that there was a real market interest in this. So we put it on Kickstarter and the beta units are now being shipped to the early backers. There's a small set of them. I think Gigabot X is just beginning and just as Gigabot did, it really depends on the community's feedback. Please reach out to us, engage on social media. It's your ideas that really will take this where it needs to be.